What up, y'all? It's your boy Red here. This is my What Up on the television series Lego Elves Secrets of Elvendale, the Netflix one. Alright. So, let's get started. What is this? I don't. I'm fucking with you. It's fucking a Netflix series on Netflix that I saw called Lego Elves. Alright. Apparently, this was a launch back in 2015. Get this uh, Lego Elf uh, thing for the Lego company, whatever. Up and running. They had um, some web series on their YouTube and some movie. And eventually Netflix got the rights to make a whole TV show about it. How is the TV show? Luckily for you guys that don't like Legos or like the Lego movies or any of that shit. You hardly see Legos in this show. Uh, you see them randomly throughout the world. I don't know if like somehow the Legos evolved into actual round people with fingers and shit and not legos i don't know it looks like it it is i don't fucking know besides that if they could just take away the lego part from this this is actually a fucking pretty good show on itself the whole elf thing now i did not see the web series or the youtube thing or any of that so i was brand new to this shit just watch this lego thing did i enjoy it it was good it was like a fucking eight episode long movie. That's basically what we're gonna get. It's not. It's eight episodes, and each episode continues right after the next one. It's like you're watching a fucking long movie. Trust me. Um, there'll be for those who are new like me. I don't even know half of the shit that was going on. All I got were dragons help elves, and they somehow fucking shed their shit after a while. Elves, you have different kinds. You have water kind, earth kind, fucking fire types, wind types, different shit going on. Um, also, the whole thing with the opening where like the world was protected by five elf sisters or something like that. You have your, like, in your fire and all that crap. The last one is love. <laughs> love. Anyways, and uh, apparently she went to protect this portal. That's where it started. And... That's where most of our main characters who are human come from and the elves and stuff like that. That's all we get. But I like it though. It starts off with already it, assuming you know all this. So it gets right into the point. There's no explaining or none of that hardly, which is pretty cool. We get right into what's going on in this part of the world and the elven kingdom where the, the fucking shit is going down. Some of our characters are like Nadia Riverheart. She's a water specialist, kind of like a mother type of the group. Friends with everyone, shy a little bit, but will speak her mind. Try to see both sides of stories, so she's cool already. Arya Windshield, I can't even say it. She's fucking energetic. I think she has ADD. She likes building machines and fucking shit up. Emily Jones and her sister Sophia Jones come from Earth. Your grandmother was one of the guardians before, one of the five sisters. They have, uh, oh, Emily Jones has the Emily. I'm guessing in previous installments, she comes here, meets these people. By this point in the show, they already know each other. The only new character is Sophie Jones, who I actually liked. She was actually fucking the best character. You would think, like, a sister would be jealous of her older sister. But, nah, she was pretty cool with all, you know. So, that's tight. We love her. Fair Leaf Shade is the only male in the cast. He seems like a normal bro. Normal bro, man. Like an average dude. And then one of my other favorite characters, Azari Fire Dancer. Tough girl. Beautiful. Scared of flying. Like Mr. T. That's what's up, man. But overall, though, all together, they uh, help each other out. They care for one another. But you have to go in here, like I did, knowing nothing and trusting them. So that's pretty cool. They have dragons. Each of them have their own dragons. We don't get to see them as much in the show because um, they're all fucking shedding shit. Yeah, that's some crazy shit. Uh, each one has powers. Like I said, earth, fire. We go on with that, man. We go on with that. But is there a good antagonist to this show? Hell yeah. There's actually a pretty good one. 
I mean, I saw it coming. You guys will see it coming. I didn't review him because you guys will see it coming. Kind of spoils it for you. And also another character too. And the fucking the motherfucking munchkins are tight. It's a great show. I highly recommend you guys check it out. If not, make your kids watch it. it teaches them about trust. Teaches them about fucking understanding one another. And yeah, it actually teaches some pretty good lessons, man. That's, that's really what the point there is. <laughs> now, the music was pretty tight. I actually like the opening. It was not bad. Music in the show is pretty good. The drawing, the animation style, simple but effective. I loved it. I love the simplicity of it. Not too fucking overcomplicated. I loved it. There's some scenes that are really detailed, but other overall though it's pretty nonchalant details. But I love it. It works for this. The fighting, we get some fights. Some shit goes down. Uh, my another fucking favorite of mine are the little goblins. Motherfucking cute. <laughs> and like the goblins from Lord of the Rings that they were tiny, <laughs> basically. Fuck. But um now I don't I'm not gonna review this, like give it a score, but if I had to give it a score, what would I give it? Hmm. As an adult watching a kid's show, this one I would say it's average for me. Something I will watch if my kids are watching it. Or my cousins or something, little cousins. But as a kid, if you watch this, as a girl especially, learning how powerful girls are and shit like that. Only one male character, really. You're probably seven. So a six for adults, kids seven, that's for sure. Not one of those shows you'll remember, but good enough to watch. Have kids be entertained and shit. But hey, that's what my opinions are. Watch the show. You know, tell me yours. Hit that like, hit that sub, catch you all next time.